Hello and welcome to Be Powerful with Liz and Lee. It's a new day and we're so glad you're here. So you can expect to hear candid conversations on what it means to be powerful. Live authentically, live in the midst of ups and downs, productively, and above all else, joyfully. We are so thankful for you, our community of listeners, and we hope you enjoy today's show. Well, hello there, Liz. Hi. We're a long way away. That's okay. Yeah. I'm good with that. I'm going to wave around so that people you can know. see us. I, I know they can see us. And if they can't today, they have seen us up close and, and personal, personal many, many days. But how are we today? We're good. I don't like when people say that, how are you today? I am doing great today. It is good. Monday. You're going to hear this on Thursday. It's Yom Kippur today. And we're on the back porch because it's a perfectly beautiful day. Yes. Yom Kippur in the back porch. <laughs> yeah. With the lawnmower in the distance. Which really you can't, I can, he I've got the there. headphones on. I, he's he's, he's okay. okay right now. He's all right. If he, he comes closer. Close, then whatever. We'll hear him in the background. Part of nature in uh, yeah. Charlotte, North Carolina is lawnmowers in the yard. Lawnmowers. Lawnmowers. Lawn <laughs> have you mowed lately? We know you love no, mowing. No, I have not mowed lately. Why? And because Well, for one thing, I got my yard seated. Ah. And now it's going to be on, you know, hold for a while. They'll get all wheat and it won't get what, you know, the grass will start to grow and I'll let it like set itself up before mm -hmm. I go banging through it with a lawnmower. <laughs> banging through it. Um, ah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, seeding, Yom yeah. Kippur, maybe uh, those things clean. are related. Let's start with a clean slate. <laughs> How can we connect the dots yeah. here? I can do that easily. Well, we're outside because it's a beautiful day. It's fall. So that feels like a nice shift. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about the shift of change of seasons. Feels good, doesn't it? In it to win it. It feels mm -hmm. great. Today is Yom Kippur, mm -hmm. the final stage after Rosh Hashanah. Right. Um, high Holy Now, we're day not Jewish. For the Jewish Sometimes I wish people. I was. I mean, they do some really cool things. This one being a cool one, they can't eat, drink, or have sex today, though. Or wear leather shoes. Exactly. According to the interwebs. Exactly. So, however, I'm wearing white. In honor. Well, I didn't know that until I just <laughs> found that out. But yeah. So here, I, here we are. Slate cleaned. If we had a grass, uh, here's, a, here's a question. Okay. If you had, if you really believe that your slate was clean, meaning all past mm -hmm. sins, all past problems, all past mindsets could be cleansed and start anew, mm -hmm. number one, would you believe it? And number two, what would it look like? It's a great question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think when you started asking me the question, I first was thinking, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good mm -hmm. on having kind of wiped the past clean and moving forward and being present, mm -hmm. I think. But I do still know that, you know, I repeat same behaviors or habits that mm -hmm. maybe don't always serve me. And we've talked about this kind of recently, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on it. But I'm working on if it. You, if you really have the consciousness that says, mm -hmm. I really have a clean slate and I can do literally anything with this clean slate. Mm -hmm. Then I think what we need to do, in my personal opinion, my not always humble opinion, <laughs> is to think much larger than we are. Okay. Like think way yeah. outside our box. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. think much bigger. Not like I want to grow my business larger. I want to have my love life better. But I want to be like, you know, the biggest of whatever you're trying to be and then work that um, way, but not work in the ways that you used to work. To exactly. Here. Like come at it with a really, I am enough. I am enough. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, Ken. I Hi, just, Barbie. And it also, can we just talk about the what? I mean, it just feels like a good, it feels like a new year. What? I think it's interesting that Fall to me feels like a new year, and that well, is in many traditions. Right, Rosh Hashanah starts the right. Jewish New Year. Right, and, and so we can let January it be our new really. year. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm cool with taking the new year anytime we need it. Yeah. Well, let me ask you the question, and okay. we'll talk about it more. Okay. If you could wipe the slate clean of your past, mm -hmm. would you believe it? That's what you asked me. And what would you do with it? I'm working on it right now. I really am. I. I'm, <laughs> it's not that I'm. I'm not wiping anything clean. <clears throat> I'm mm -hmm. respecting my past. Sure. Uh, loving that's it. That's important. And, and letting it be what it is. And then what I'm trying to do with me today, and just thought of this literally before, before we came on, so we don't do a lot of planning, obviously, <laughs> uh, what is to think way beyond what I think I'm capable of doing, meaning 
most decisions I make, for instance, in business mm -hmm. are coming off of set of, of knowledge and a set of, um, you know, things that I have always thought to be. Okay. And I think, oh, you have to take, take this many steps to get to this next phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what if I just work backwards? What if I assume I'm already at that next phase, whatever I choose that to be, right? and then work backwards and just you know work from the place of accomplishment? And then you filter out all the nonsense that sometimes you keep going through. Like, oh, to get to this certain point, I have to put so many hours in. I have to hire this many people. I have to spend this much money. How about if I just get there in my mindset and then I go backwards and I go, oh, I just focus in on that one, maybe one or two things, one or right. two things, instead of there's so much to do, right? Sure. I know that sometimes the thought about the things we have to do and the checklist or the steps to get to tier level A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. I can get, you know, paralyzed within yeah. the mundane and the minutia right. holding you back from the bigger don't we all? Goals. And so I think that's a really good way to look at it. What would be an example? I'm going to imagine that my business, Hilliard Studio mm -hmm. Method, mm -hmm. is already massively successful. We okay. have studios in, you know, every state, multiple, right. multiple, multiple. How would I be acting mm. as the owner at that point? Mm -hmm. How would I act? Would I be like doing the every single detail work? No. Or, right. But what I'd have to do is have a massive goal, like a massive focus. And then all the other stuff would be filtered out. Right. So it's tricky, but I, I'm trying to sort of, it's also just sort of setting your goals high and living the moments you have. I'm not even going to say this. I don't hate to go back, but we, we both lost a friend last week. Right. And I was at the funeral yesterday while you were preparing for a birthday party. And I kept saying, wow, today's like a circle of life day. Right. Well, it was a beautiful day in really both of those respects, I thought. The funeral was beautiful. It was for a beautiful individual that mm -hmm. died, which some people would say is too young. But when you look at her life as a whole, it encompassed so much uh, love, achievement. Right. Like she did not, I believe, take her life for granted. No. She was very aware of her mm -hmm. life because she'd been sick as a child. Mm -hmm. And so that drove home to me and I think the people that were there, the importance of, and her husband actually said that. He said, you've got 24 hours in a day. Yeah. You're not waiting till you get to the weekend. This is what he said. Mm. You're not waiting till you get to the weekend to have fun. It's Monday morning at 9 a.m. You're having fun right now. You're doing what's important to you right now. Or appreciating the fact that what you're doing even if it feels mundane at the right. time, is God's work. That's my words. He didn't say that part. But I really yeah. think it is. And so then I agree. you had a birthday party. That's right, for my daughter. Yeah. And what did that do? It celebrated her birth. Mm -hmm. Her birth, her life, her accomplishment into being 15 years old. Exactly. And it was just, those to me are very equal. It's one and the same. I you know? agree. I agree. Yeah, so I thought that was really a, a great day, um, sad and, and fun and all the things that pretty much every moment of life can be, depending on our perspective. Exactly. And when we yeah. lose someone to death, they're gone and don't mm -hmm. have the grief that we do and hopefully had time before death to go through any sort of grieving process with family or friends. Mm -hmm. And it's that, you know, always reminder of that it's how do we look at that person's life, reflect upon our own yeah. and how we're spending our time? I mean, we always want more hours in the day, but thank goodness we've got 24. And so what are we going to do with them? And we have this moment, mm -hmm. which we can't get back. And I really do like your yeah. the higher level look at things mm -hmm. because it's very super easy because of the way our lifestyles are crafted with constant connection to sometimes mundane things on our phones or our computers to get bogged down, you know, and checking emails. And I'd say 80% of them are junk and it's just kind of like a slog of things yeah. away. And so I today needed to make myself a list because I'm a little bit quote unquote, you know, 
behind. You're a list girl and it and works so, for you. Right, because it helps me go, okay, stop and carve time for this. And, and what's how more does that important? make me feel than when that's done versus just ruminating and perseverating over the same thing and not taking the action to get it done. And I like how you said, what? how would I be acting? How would I be behaving if I owned you know, 50 studios. Right. It, it's very different. I mean, there are probably specific and large things mm -hmm. that you would change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think we need to start acting that way. I agree. Well, I'm, I'm starting right now. Okay. <laughs> I like it. So uh, unbeknownst to you all, I own several million. <laughs> I, have, I have lots and lots of studios all over the... Well, you know, you can look at it this way. We have lots of people all over the United States. We do. And even in the, in the world at large that stream our classes. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to, in my mind, believe I can take that to the level of brick and mortar without... Too much trouble mm -hmm. because it can be done. It's done well, all done the time. It. It's, right. it's done all the time. Right. And the other thing that I was talking about with business, I'm going to stay on business for okay. a minute. I was going to flip it. Oh, I wanna, you no, no, flip no, it? not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay. Well, I was having this great conversation with your sister yesterday. Oh, good. And while you were, you talk about slogging, <laughs> she was like cooking, you were cooking was, dinner for like 15 girls right. and slicing up some protein. Your and sister and I were salads. sitting on the back patio having like, a glass of like wine. They they're having fun together. <laughs> <laughs> but we were talking no, that's about- that's great. I how, love it. Yeah, about how much she had grown and mm. what she does exactly. with her, her business and how much I we had I had grown and how we both came to the conclusion that the mysteries of life sometimes business is a you need the degrees, you need mm. the things, you need to have all the the right, you know, uh, letters by your name. It's kind of not true. And I, I think most entrepreneurs would tell you that. Most people don't sure. have the letters by their name, or some of them do, and I good for them. But one thing I said to her was, "What I've learned is business is not hard as long as you know what you don't know, and right, as long right. as you hire the people that do know the things you don't yeah. know." And so she felt the same way. We just had a really great, great time. We also trans. That. We also went into personal, interpersonal relationships, family wise too. Which I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> okay. We'll save that for <laughs> off the mic. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, no, I love that. And uh -huh. I, I know she's worked really hard in a similar line mm -hmm. of business as you and of us mm -hmm. um, in more of a retail service mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. for clients. And she's done a really great job. And I, I know that, you know, her degree in college kind of matched her there. I mean, it's fashion merchandising. However, I mean, the experience- Dental hygiene has of, taken me so, so far, far and down the- <laughs> Right. So, you know, she had that. But I mean, what makes her good is the, you know, how do you manage people? That probably wasn't a huge part of her training. How mm -hmm. do you, you know, fly overseas and buy clothes and mm -hmm. deal with clients? I mean, I was, an, well, my degree was in elementary school- education I think major. that's hugely important it's in what you do. It's very important, yeah. but really the skills I learned, I mean, once you get into the classroom, that's always mm -hmm. helpful of being in front of a group and working with other people. But really my point is just experience is experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hilliard Studio Method to me is a second language and with your mentorship and my passion for it and my, my just love for it and doing it over and over and over again. Yeah. That's how I learned. You're so good at it. But I also, Thanks. and this is no slam to you clients that come to Lee's 815, but sometimes don't you think being a school teacher for younger children helps you on the floor of your <laughs> studio? Method? Yeah, no, it doesn't Instead matter. Hurting, hurting, age, them, hurting, hurting them, cats. cats and no. all that, no. I said that out loud the other day and I didn't mean it as a slam. Yeah. I was like, I was going to take you all to the bar, but it was a really full class. And I said, well, I don't want to. It's like hurting cats. Yeah. So I felt like, ooh. And, that and was they still love you. Rude. Yeah. But I mean, but it wasn't. It is. It was true. <laughs> so what was your point you were going to make a while ago? Um, just that experience mm -hmm. really helps. And so I'm looking at, you know, my son who, if he chooses and whatever the path after high school, one way is college. And I'm mm -hmm. a huge proponent of education. I mean, I just said I was an elementary education right. major and a history major. And so I think that's important to gain that knowledge while you have the opportunity when you're young and how you use it, though, you know, find a path that... yeah challenges you that 
makes you wake up. Oh, one thing we talked about with my sister yesterday when I was included in the conversation <laughs> was the show on Netflix, The Blue Zones, like Living to a Hundred. Yes, yes. You'll have, if you haven't seen that, you it's have a to great, see it. it's great, great, great show. Yeah. Um, the one of the rungs spokes on the wheel of why these people in different areas of the world are living a really long life well is to wake up every day with purpose. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's something we really take for granted. And it doesn't matter what your purpose is. Is it to take care of children? Is it to run out in the world and, you know, sell things? Is it for us to wake up and go to the studio? Is it to anything from gardening yeah. to providing any sort of service to others. It's also what is that purpose in a greater level yes. for you? And I feel like people ask me, because I'm older mm -hmm. and, and everybody knows my age because all I do is talk about my age. And like, <laughs> because it helps for, I think it helps for people to know sure. that I feel so good at 69 and boy, can't wait to be 70 and all that. But to me, the word pur purpose also mm -hmm. translates to passion, like mm -hmm. your passion and your purpose you see your purpose every single day. My purpose is to live such a healthy, happy life. And really, I can't imagine giving up. I can't. Mm -hmm. I think there's a giving upness mm -hmm. that happens sometimes when people get older. Sure. That sort of like, a, well, I've done my thing. Uh, I don't really know how to relate to anyone anymore. And if you're finding yourself waking up like that or having moments where you're like, I'm really dispensable or right. you're not dispensable, no. you, the knowledge that you gain, and it's funny because your sister was saying, gosh, I feel so old now. And she's what, 38 or something. I don't know how old she is, but it, Four, every 39. year you get to be um, a little older, you are, you gain so much wisdom in mm -hmm. just living life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the more you keep that door open in your mind and in your heart to experience and to rethink anything, like we're cleaning the slate today. Right. Let's rethink what it's like to have Hilliard Studio Method. Let's rethink how it is to have me and you, you know, because we don't want to rest on our laurels right. in our relationship. We yeah. want our relationship to continue to blossom and to fulfill both of us and to fulfill the people we love or even the people we don't love. You True. Know? So um, purpose is also the passion of, uh, you know, if They're it's gardening or whatever. Yeah. They're interchangeable, but I do want to hear you say, what is your purpose? And mm -hmm. then separately, what is your passion? Okay. My purpose is to learn and live and love every single thing and moment and person I can. Okay. Like, my, I'm not kidding. That sounds, maybe it sounds airy fairy, or maybe it sounds <laughs> silly, or maybe it sounds rote. I don't know, care. I don't really care how it sounds. My passion is to be living so healthy and sharing the benefits of that. Mm -hmm. Because right. I know if I share it, I'm not going to have to worry about people being depressed. I'm not have to worry about people being, you know, trying to hurt each other. Because sure. if you feel really good about yourself and you feel really healthy, then you don't tend to be uh, a, a person that does destruction in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be my. Do you ask me about my purpose? Yes, that's purpose. My purpose is also, and I know that to be a to really grow my business. Right, it's really to grow my business, and so I have three of them: be healthy, grow my business, and keep that business that same passion. Yeah, the minute it starts to be not that passion, mm -hmm. it's not my business. Mm -hmm. I'll just. Somebody else can have it or it can, it can, go, it can go away. Right. And then... Um, I think that's a really powerful thing because I yeah. think people who would look at you being able to say that, and you've always said that, yeah. if you don't be able to walk away from it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you lose that passion, then yeah. you have to be you able lose to the let it go. Yeah. But yeah. you've worked so hard. So I bet some people would be but like, I'm not I hanging on to it go. now. Exactly. I am not hanging on to it because right. of how hard I've worked. That's right. I'm hanging on... I'm not even hanging, hanging on, on to it. Right. I'm creating it anew right now so that it spreads the the beauty and the health and the goodness that it is, yeah. the positivity, the the challenge to anyone that will open the door to it. Yep. And that turns me on. That makes me passionate and that makes me have purpose. And then really my other one is basic happiness. Yeah. My my purpose is to be basically happy. And basically, even when I'm unhappy, I'm pretty happy. 
Sure. And what you do you know? mean by basically like live in, you know, contentment of, of everything big and small? Live in the contentment of my choices mm -hmm. and never, never having regrets. Mm -hmm. And I do have one, but it's the one I work on every single sure. day. Would I change that one even? No, because what do you get from the jarring mistakes you do in sure. life? You gain such passion and wisdom to not only make that right, but then you start to open the doors that make your growth and make the growth of those people around you yep. multiply by massive amounts of, of things. So I don't have any regrets and I don't have any envies. I don't have any That's of a good that. one. I just don't anymore. I mean, I'm almost 70 got to get my birthday party figured out too but anyway <laughs> yeah and I'm wait happy. did you listen to there was an oprah interview on some podcast the other day did you listen to it to, uh yeah glennon doyle y'all should listen to that then that's where that came from too when she said she said she is she's not envious oh she did oprah right she did say yeah that. she also said she likes the dark Ah, oh. and I love the dark. She yeah. loves the. She's also. Well, I mean, I just feel like, like there's a, a day before me or something. Oh, that's right. Not that, we're, not that I'm like Oprah, and I didn't mean. No, to, what I'm saying yeah. is drawing the comparison. Yeah. into that wisdom. Yeah, after a certain amount of years, that yeah, just, you're, right. you know, that shift of I'm. I don't want what other people have. I like don't the gratitude for what. Yeah. you do have. I and that's my practice that I don't even. I do unconsciously. I just. I just. I'm always so grateful. Yeah. You know, I don't want to yeah. overblow me. <laughs> you know, I don't want to yeah. make myself. Like, I'm always so grateful and so happy. And and I don't want to be bullshitty. Yeah. But I'm very, very grateful. And I really remember that every single morning I wake up. Mm -hmm. Every single morning I wake up. I'm grateful to have breath. I'm grateful that I get to go do what I get to go do. And when I'm, when things are going south or whatever, I'm grateful for that. Sure. I'm just grateful. And. I think that's why joy comes to me so easily these days. I think so, too. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So do you have any wipe the slate clean yes. things that you're going to share? Or I don't know if I'll share them, but okay. I'm going to wipe the slate clean on my business. I like that. <laughs> er? You want to clarify that for your employees? <laughs> hey, you all are. By the way, at Hilliard uh, City Method, they are the greatest people. And, you know, we don't have that many employees. Right. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you better people than the people we work with oh, I, nice. that are in my space. And if I don't want people in my space and they don't want to be in my space if we can't have some harmony. Mm -hmm. And so my job is to keep harmony. My job is to keep sharing the joy of it. They're not making millions of dollars working at Hilliard Studio Method. What they're doing is sharing their purpose, their passion yep. for health and fitness to other people. Right. And they're also finding their way. I mean, I love all of them, but everybody's got another passion they're working on. Maybe a business, sure. maybe a relationship. What has ever happened? Okay. Do you, I mean, can I share? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, I got sidetracked with my lawnmower man. Okay. <gasps> tell me two separate things. Passion First, and purpose. Or either one. You get to choose which one you want to talk about, passion mm -hmm. or purpose. Mm -hmm. But you have to share both. Do you, <laughs> I love that you think you're so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. You are. Um, <laughs> all right. Purpose 100% is... A lot of parenting for me, mm. um, just being there yes. and being a listening parent to help my children find their purpose. It's sort of egocentric when you're that age. So yeah. it's a small, slow step, but to just nurture them mm -hmm. and who they are exactly and to let them know that I love them. Well, you do a great Big time, time all the time, no matter what. So that's a huge purpose in my life. And just to teach them, they would always get out of the car in elementary school and I'd be like, be good, have fun. And that's a little, you know, generic, but also I mean that. Mm -hmm. I mean, be good towards other people, not like sit in your chair, be well behaved, right. good, which is also nice, but be good to the world, like share your love, your energy, your kindness, and then have fun because kind of that life is short. And as children, they sit around all day at school and have can to I, behave I and I want them to have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you don't forget these things because you got to give me two more. But <laughs> yesterday after I'd come in from the funeral and all these 15-year-old girls that are 
literally the cutest, most beautiful girls walking in my house. <laughs> and they're all looking at me like, well, what do we do? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm literally just out of a funeral. <laughs> I, I don't know where Leah is. She's upstairs. You know, you're throwing on makeup real fast. Right. And when Lee comes, what came down the steps, your lit face just lit up. And those girls are like, yeah, I mean, they, oh. the energy that you bring to these children, or they're not children, they're teenagers, they're yeah. human beings, is palpable. And they love you for it. That's sweet. And I know you love them because it shows. I do. But they love you back. And I was like, wow, that was a whole different reception. <laughs> they're looking at me like, hey, what do we Who's do now? Chick? They're looking at you like, yay, Lee's here. Okay, we'll do this and that. <laughs> anyway, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, because it was a surprise party. So they were yeah. here before, Anna. Yeah. And I put them a little bit to the task. Yes. So, yes, children rearing. That's mm -hmm. a purpose. And, well, it's adult rearing. It's growing it little is. adults it at is. some point. Um, rearing you <laughs> is a purpose. <laughs> you know, that's no joke. I know. That's Keeping no your joke. ass in line. <laughs> <laughs> you do my keep me from flying off somewhere, is, like into some orbit. It know? is. I mean, okay, so like I have a little bit of a purpose to put like fairy thread around your ankles and tether you to the ground and let you fly. No, I mean, you do whatever you need to do. It is That's funny. really good. I like that visual. Yeah, you yeah. see it. Mm -hmm. You like a good visual. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my purpose is to, I mean, the, what comes to mind is literally serve you. And I know that it's like a weird oh, thing to say, but I know it's not that. And it's it's serving sweet. you is serving us and it's serving Everything that just made me a little bit emotional inside. Well, I know, <laughs> I know, and I'm a little emotional here. And I know. that was really sweet. Um, you know, when you love someone so much, I mean, there's so much in me that just overflows for you in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just want to keep at that. I mean, I I don't have space in this short life to have anything other than that be at the root of who we are together but stop. this makes me so i'm just i'm just absorbing this yeah it's just it's beautiful so well, it feels that way it feels beautiful the feeling feels really beautiful how i feel towards you in every realm of work and personal and all the things all the things, all the things. <laughs> yeah wow, wow. Oh, thanks you're welcome me and too to, <laughs> i mean and i really think we have the same idea about spreading that kind of energy and mm -hmm. love to the people around you. The It's almost like your legacy, right? It's mm -hmm. like, what do I want to leave behind at the end of the day when I interact with people is that they feel better afterwards. Mm -hmm. I get the lucky benefit of having their endorphins make them feel a little better too, as far as the workout, but just the exchange, yeah. like you said, of energy, that mm -hmm. that's positive, but it's also truthful, yes. that it's real and it's not just like, fine, how are you? If it isn't, I mean, right. there's a time and place. I tend to wear my heart on my sleeve, and so let I think it it's all. One of your most attractive out. qualities. Well, thank I you. I really do. I do. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate being able to live like that. Who mm -hmm. I am and how I feel, and not feel shame or you know a burden. You're such a privilege to have to to love mm -hmm. and to be loved by you because you do wear your. There's no conniving. There's no. no, no. Um, there's no anything that you're so purely love or purely hurt or purely, yeah. you know, whatever hurt your feeling is, is pure and it's there. And it always comes back to us. Hmm. And I really am so privileged to be the recipient of your love. <laughs> Same. Just saying. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we mean, didn't know this was going to turn into a love, a love fest, fest. But here we go. And I looked away because there's obviously we're outside. There was, there was a blue jay a in that blue, tree having a blast. Beautiful. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. It took my attention, but not yeah. away from what you said. Yeah. And I feel really proud about that that's what we offer the world mm -hmm. independently and together. Mm -hmm. And it's really why we're here. I mean, it's why... It's why all we of go into the studio. It's why we do this podcast. It's why we share anything. Because yeah. if you have love to share and I don't know. Or you have you place. have anything to share that is beneficial to to the to people you're around or to yourself. Because mm -hmm. anything that you really are passionate about, that you right. really share, it's not something to hold inside. True, true, then true. Then it's nobody's. It's no not even good for you to hold the love inside. If you feel this love or this passion to share how you feel, 
that you know will boost other people, sure. then that's exactly what will happen. And it's just, and then the, the energy just flips back and forth and all around and becomes massive. And that's what we're doing in our relationship. So I think part of the magic of our relationship going into our studio and going into the business, mm -hmm. interesting that I'm just like making that, you know, connection there. I like it. Is palpable. I really know that that's why it's successful. You know? I agree. I, I So... I did interrupt you a little bit. Though. No, 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 no. I mean, it's a it's yeah. a conversation. Yeah, it is a conversation. No, those were my main. Yeah. I mean, that's my purpose and my passion is, mm -hmm. you know, health and wellness. And I've got mm -hmm. some work to do uh, about feeling really mm -hmm. much more <sighs> secure in myself, mm -hmm. um, really owning who I am and who I can be. And being more of a friend to myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did a lot of that in the last podcast. And yep. that's, and I think you can't have enough of that. The, I agree. The being your best friend person and being the most, you know, willing to accept whatever's going on with you mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, in your case, a lot, it's physically. Yep. Um, and that's great. I mean, that's great. Right. Look what you get to do. Exactly. Exactly. We talked about that exactly. too. Yep. Get to do get it. To you do get it. to do it. Yeah. And I just, you know, people hit different milestones of ages, 40, mm -hmm. 50, 60, mm -hmm. whatever. It's the best decade ever. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to, like, there is such an external mm -hmm. feeling of that, but I want a little more internal. Yes. You'll get it. Feeling of that. You keep, if, it, if that's where you direct your pack, right. passion and purpose, you will get it. Mm -hmm. You will get it. Yeah. And again, we can look at our friend that is no longer in a physical body. Exactly. That we buried yesterday. And she did that. She did. She was an example of doing that yeah. to the nth degree, being in her physical body and doing everything she, her passion was doing it well. And she did it so well. And she inspired me. She inspired you. You, mm -hmm. I was saying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And all the people that knew her. And and that, you can't say much more about somebody when they pass than that. <laughs> exactly. You know, if they live their life as an inspiration, if they live their life as a as a picture of love and compassion to other people. Yes. And and that's the other thing, compassion. Mm -hmm. But you, you, it's hard to be compassionate to others when you're not, not compassionate, compassionate to yourself. yourself. Yeah. And a lot of people will read that as a very narcissistic, thing to say. I don't think so. Or some people might, but it is, you know, this is not a phase we're all going through in 2023. Mm -hmm. This is not a phase. The people that are the happiest in the world are the happiest within themselves. And then we can have these great relationships like we do. <laughs> we back to that right off the bat. No, we do. And I think that's mm -hmm. lovely. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of our purpose and our passion and that continues to grow. Mm -hmm. And I'm just here to do it with you. So, okay. How many rings have you got now? Are we going to get to, yeah. <laughs> two? Yeah. Two. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. They're pretty. Yeah. I mean, those are, those are our, oh, now the birds are going to make noise. Do you yeah, they're chirping. They're happy. They're this happy. is just they're like Snow White. This is I was exactly just thinking Snow, like White. Snow White. See, we've got them. They're happy. They've got purpose. Their purpose is to be, hey, watch me here in the tree because I'm watching him. Beauty. Um, yeah. The beauty all around us. <laughs> oh, and yesterday we what? were sitting out here. Oh my gosh. Okay, I was making a reel that was so silly and it was just fun <laughs> because we'd all been out playing golf the night at, at the night before on Saturday night at mm -hmm. in town with my girls, my my daughter and people and Michelle Micheline and you. <laughs> and I was sitting here with my ear pods in, you know, reading the times <laughs> and put the times down and went, I'm gonna make a really quick reel. And this bird starts making such an annoying It was the noise. weirdest sound. I thought it was like a faucet <laughs> pretty dripping that was like a pop, <laughs> like a, a really slam of a ping pong ball just yeah, over, like over at the same pace, over, just 
Like mind numbing. I don't know. It was terrible. But you had your pods in. I was in the house and you said, what is that horrible noise? And it was a bird. And I went and yelled at it for a little bit and he stopped. You did go out. You went outside and flailed <laughs> about a little. They don't, you know, if you flail about, they go, oh, they must have not liked that sound. I mean, I don't know what the hell his purpose was, but I didn't like it. So I'm sorry for squashing his purpose, but it was not my passion. Look at him. Can you see him in the street right here? He's just, yeah. I, he knows what we're up to. And he's like, I've got a voice too. I will be heard. I know. I know yeah. we can hear the sirens and he's singing in the his back, and yeah. the birds. We should probably wrap it up. I, will. I don't know. I don't know. It's a beautiful day. I hope everybody's out on this Thursday if you're listening to us when it comes out every yes. Thursday. Yes. So, a few little housekeepings. Yeah. It is Thursday. So, there are a few more days left mm-hmm. to get ready to walk with us at the St. Jude Walk Run. Right. Saturday, September in 29th in Uptown Charlotte mm-hmm. at 9 30 in the morning. We will have our team, Cameron Gray, there. Right. If you cannot attend, then we perhaps... We have Cameron Gray in person there. Yay! Uh, yeah. Perhaps you can donate at the link in our bios to St. Jude. Right. Um, Please do. When the first year we did fundraising, when Cameron was diagnosed with cancer, we hit like $111,000 Within or more. a week or less than a week. Yes. And you're, that was when you and Anna decided to do this. Right. And they called it Team Cameron Gray and they were hoping to make $1,500, $2,500. No, oh, yeah. And and before we could even check Turn the around. thing, it was $10,000 and then it became one hundred and eleven. And now I think we're up to on this one, like 5,000 or something. Yes. And so really, of course, every donation matters. 100% goes to St. Jude exactly. for Children's Research Hospital. What's more important than a child's health? <laughs> Is there anything? Right. Right. So, um, And so if you're inclined to donate, please do. It doesn't matter how much, mm-hmm. um, but... It or if you're goes. just inclined to come out and support us and walk. Yeah. You know, do just, both. Yeah, do both. Or do – I don't like to ask people for money after we've asked them once. Exactly. If, it's, if you're inclined to give money again, do it. Or give it for the first time, do it. If you're not inclined, God bless you. Come walk with us. You know, get out. It'll be a beautiful day. And even if it's not a beautiful day, it'll be a beautiful cause for us yes. to go on. And, and uh, Anna and I went last year, and it was very inspirational mm-hmm. to have, you know, lots of children and patients and – you know, cancer free children out there right. and their families, um, other stories that didn't go that direction. Sure. But, you know, they still were supported in some ways by St. Jude. So it's just a good event. Yeah. So we will be there. What else is going um, on? Well, I mean, we've got a lot going on in the studio. If you guys are, uh, we've got an October challenge coming up. It's going to be amazing. We did our very first one in August. This is our second go round. Yes. And we've got maybe a spot or two left, maybe. Yep. But we're going to lock that up by the end of this week. So if you're interested, just DM any either of us or leave it on our speak pipe. Right. And yeah. really what the challenge is, is taking four classes a week for the entire month. Um, Some people already do that. Some people come occasionally, Mm -hmm. but it's time to level up and see what your workout Mm -hmm. does four times a week. Yeah. Stand by it. And we'll give you the nutritional uh, information. Again, remember Hilliard City Method is a really strong team of of, of women, we well men, we welcome you. But right now, it's just it's women, and uh, Sarah Stevenson is our nutritionist on on staff, and she will be presenting you with nutritional information. Um, we and me as well will be talking about the importance and you two, uh, yep. all of us, of the the reasons this four times a week is the optimum thing to do. But anyway, it's it's a great op- opportunity to really delve in for one solid right. month, 30 days. and um, Accountability, baby. Um, and then as far as things going on in the studio, there's nothing but fun coming up. It's almost Halloween. <laughs> oh, we're doing You know, that. we're going big. We're going to, we are going, going bigger. Big. Let's not tell them yet what we're doing. Nope. You're, you can just like stand by. Should we? You st- can stand by. <laughs> Because I know you give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, wow, we were on pins and needles well, we about wondering. that one. I don't know. You kind of always go bonkers on Halloween. So I do. But I know. I and my wig, wig is wig on comes. the way. It, it, I got an it, email today. Sure. Sure. Listen, when that wig comes in. See, that's what I do. I, I create like a it. character. Well, if I don't, I'll get another one. <laughs> I create a character around. The, I'll look in the mirror with me on some kind of crazy wig. This one is crazy. And. I'm going to be, I have a feeling who I'm going to be. I mean, it's, it's not a character that's known to any, even me at this point, but this character will be strong and ready for her. Oh, wow. She's ready to burst out. Can't wait to meet her. Yeah, we'll see. She's got some red hair coming. You just um, spoiled it. Well, I don't know. Maybe. No, I didn't okay. spoil anything. I didn't see anything yet. That's true. And thank you, Genevieve, for speaking to us. Um, I want to speak back to you if, if I can just for a moment. 
she said she enjoyed our podcast because she is actually an identified lesbian, you Mm -hmm. know, and she's had some heartbreak lately and that our, our podcasts have lit, have opened her heart. Or she saw us on Tamron Hall. Oh, she did. It was that. Yeah. She saw us on Tamron Hall and she said, Mm -hmm. uh, that experience opened her heart and that, that we needed to know that. And so, Genevieve, your message opened my yep. heart, and I want you to know how much that meant to us to hear your message. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and then hopefully we can do that for each other going forward. It's um, it's fall. For Lee and I, it's the new year, even though we're not Jewish. For we're Lee just and trying. me. For I'm Lee sorry, and for me. Lee and me. I'm, not I'm also dealing with this. Right. <laughs> That's a tough <laughs> one actually, to deal with. She's dealing with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm doing the best I can. You're yeah. doing great, baby. I mean, I'm, third grade was hard for me. Is that when I was learn, supposed to learn that? Probably. Yeah. And every year after she's that. She's a rough teacher. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, All right. Are we, are we landing the plane? Land the plane, baby. All right. The birds have gone. The mowers are gone. It's time to close it down. <laughs> All right. I love you. Love you. Bye. See you. Bye. Thanks for listening to us today, wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, you can now find our podcast on YouTube. Yeah. If you liked it, please share, rate, and review. We love five stars. And we hope you'll work out with us online or in studio at hilliardstudiomethod.com. 